And uh, we're moving along to the next topic. And the next topic is diaconia, uh, the service in the church. And I would like to present to you very Reverend Nikola Buryatnik, uh, pastor of St. Joseph, the betrothed parish, Chicago, Illinois. Father Mikola, the floor is all yours. Slava Isusu Christu. Can you hear me? Can you hear us, guys? Yes. Yes, we can. Slava Isusu Christu. Slava Isusu Thank you, Father Andri, for um, such a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Um, I'm here to talk about the Akonia and serving our neighbor. And I selected this particular icon uh, of, uh, um, of the Good Samaritan. And uh, I liked it because it shows the Good Samaritan is uh, Christ himself becomes the Good Samaritan. And um, he is the one who will, uh, through us, serve all those in need. I picked two commandments, uh, two uh, greatest commandments uh, in the law. The Jesus, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love your Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. For me, always it was a really um, in, the interesting part in these two uh, two um, commandments of love uh, that uh, we talk about love of God, we talk about love of a neighbor, and also uh, love your neighbor as yourself. And, and I, I believe the important part is that you have to uh, learn how to. We have to learn how to love ourselves. We have to learn how to be connected with God in ourselves who we are, what is our self-image. That's a very important part. And that self-image of, of a beloved son and daughter of Christ uh, it can be uh, always uh, formed, uh, you know, open to us through liturgia, through witness, through koinonia, and of course through diakonia, through service. So it's always important to remember about that part love as yourself because if we uh find god in ourselves we can find a neighbor that we we will love and help and support so we can love god we cannot do one and not do other things and it's really it's it's really something that um uh, always uh touched me so um we um move forward a little bit the next uh, slide please um, I selected these icons just to, to show us a little bit we have come to believe the love the love that God has for us God is love and the one who remains the love remains in God and God remains in him and uh, this is the Good Shepherd and this is the icon of uh, also uh, Good Shepherd but also a Good Samaritan actually so it's also a uh, uh, something that shows us that we are all in need uh, to be helped by Christ. He goes and find, uh, leaves the 99 and finds all of us, those who are lost, who are in need of his love and help and support. Um, next, please. Um, about uh, self-image, about loving ourselves. I've put, uh, I've found something um, from one of the pastors, actually in Tucson, Arizona, uh, he laid out these uh, points about people with good self-image. This is the goal for us to have so we can feel good of ourselves. So when, when we love ourselves, we can project it on other people. Um, something to think about. Uh, please, next. Uh, next. Love your neighbor and uh, who is my neighbor? That's a very... Um, important question as father andri mentioned before we um we sometimes focus only on our our closed community uh and and we don't go outside but where do we start and my family is my first church community spouses children brothers and sisters uh in-laws even and um 
of course this is this is so important for us to to always remember and during the time of pandemic actually that was a very um very important part and we actually felt what it means to have a family church family community because this is where we start this is where we are formed this is we when we uh, where we encounter god himself the first image of god children see through their parents so the, the family the family members are the first neighbors actually the ones that we need to help support care be present uh, because we can go and help so many other people but it's sometimes it's hard to pay attention to those in need in your own particular family and the family and your siblings and and so on so it's so important to always remember about that part uh, because we can go and help people far away from us and it's sometimes easier than actually start with your own family all God's people in my parish community are our neighbors all whether they like us or not, whether they agree with us on different political topics or something else, they, 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 are, they are the subject. They are the, they are the real persons. This is where we actually focus. So co-workers, uh, people of different race, religion, political views, so-called enemies, you know, and that's a, it's a really hard. Sinners. We can put the sinners. Who is the sinner? Everyone is a sinner. So... Uh, these are things very important always in, in our, um, when, we, when we think about who is my neighbor and how to serve them better. Uh, next, please. Um, uh, love your God by loving your neighbor as yourself. Truly, I tell you, whatever, whatever you did for one of the least ones of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Uh, during the time of pandemic, I was told by our sister that there is no quarantine for doing acts of charity, and they refused to stop helping um, helping uh, others uh, and, and doing uh, their work of charity. Usually, uh, our sisterhood is uh, focused on helping orphans uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so it's really even hard to say sometimes. They are really going into different regions, they find people who distribute that help, they collect almost every week, they send 300, 400 pounds of, of clothing and, um, and, and medication sometimes, and uh, different kind of resources to help these uh, orphanages. Uh, and uh, they don't stop, you know, sometimes it's so hard because, you know, they pay so much time um, so my, uh, you know, they spend so much time helping orphans sometimes there are so many things that can be done here in the parish, but, um, but they're, they, 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 like, you know, of course, fundraising and stuff because we have to build, fix and stuff like that. But um, for them, it's so important that if we stop, if they stop doing that, I think they will stop uh, even supporting our parish. So for them, it's, it's, it's vital, it's crucial, and we have to support, support that. Uh, and not only in Ukraine, we can find all these poor countries, we can support those who were affected, for example, when we uh, made a collection for Katrina or some, uh, you know, survivors of Katrina, those who were affected by, by different, um, like we, once we were able to support a uh, parish uh, in Houston a little bit. So with our all eparchy, it's a great example. Uh, support wounded soldiers and their families. This is something that in our parish um, became um, um, uh, so as, as a, a something that we we do it's not an easy uh, acts of charity but it's very important we work with uh, with organizations uh, like revive soldier Ukraine uh, and, and bring soldiers here and stay they stay here for a year for uh, or a year and a half six months it depends we, we organize their uh, medical treatment rehabilitation and we think we're actually helping them, but I think these wounded soldiers, when they are living in our parish, in our community, they're helping us because they change us. We can actually see the reality. Um, we can see the things uh, that uh, sometimes, you know, on the television or in the movies, but it's different. It's easier to send the help somewhere else sometimes, but to take care of someone on a daily life, someone who's paralyzed. Uh, who has not only physical illness, but also um, things that um, uh, hurt their soul. 
Um, and uh, they, they need us, but they think we also need them because they transform our lives. Um, they bring us back into reality and uh, help us um, to serve our neighbors. We can always organize AA groups in our group. So take care of the people who are, um, you know, fighting addiction. We are very blessed in our parish to have uh, two groups like this, one in English, which was organized by Father Tom, I believe with his, uh, Father Tom Glenn, uh, blessed memory, and uh, around 30 years ago. And there is a new uh, group that uh, was organized five years ago in Ukrainian language. Um, they help those who are, and we, we Ukrainians, you know, everybody struggles with that, but in Ukrainian, um, organ, uh, you know, grew, um, like uh, groups and, and of course communities, it's, it's a very important topic. We sometimes we avoid that, but we have to help those, those people um, at these hard times. Of course, support new immigrants. We, we can uh, organize some kind of support for them. It's uh, something we started uh, in the past, but it, it kind of stopped in that way because uh, we live in Chicago and there's so much support around it, but still each parish can have a little group that can actually support um, each other in helping them with the papers, with the finding jobs, you know, finding even a place where to live. We had one initiative that was uh, run by our parishioners here uh, with that. Um, volunteering is very important part. Anything that we do, try we, 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 we somehow want to find the volunteers and organize ourselves into different groups. Uh, we can um, volunteer in the parish, we can um, volunteer in the hospital when there is no quarantine or uh, pandemic like that, soup kitchen, uh, and so forth. These, these, are, these are things that we can always do uh, in our parishes. But in, there is our, here is some 10 ways of um, uh, our parish community can get involved in showing love to those who need it during the time of pandemic. So that's important part. I found this uh, in one of the uh, Protestant parishes and uh, changed it a little bit. Uh, but these things are very important, especially during the time that we have now, because many of us cannot go to parishes. We cannot uh, pray together um, in person. So, of course, we have to try to find a way still to keep the liturgical life, the, the prayer prayer life of the church, of the community. We, uh, we can broadcast our liturgical services online, and everybody is doing that. And actually, we sometimes have no idea how many people are actually watching us and praying with us. And they can they also even support our parishes. We can offer our prayers with neighbors, praying together, even with people who are not our parishioners. Um, Bible studies online. Many of these things can be done. And there's a, some, some of the options that we can always, uh, uh, we can always use. Uh, next, please. We can always keep, give a call, some simple things. Call our, um, our parishioners, especially uh, elderly parishioners who are at home. We can use phone, we can use sometimes Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, and so on. There are some, some models here uh, describe the ways of contacting and checking them. We, we have to make sure that we will always regularly check with our um, with our uh, neighbors our parishioners uh, so because many people will not ask for help many people will not uh, talk uh, about their need so we have to approach them in, in, in different ways using uh, ele electronic means and uh, you know sometimes even uh, you know people will remember coming in front of the house and, and greeting someone with with a with uh, uh, singing happy birthday and leaving the, 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 leaving the gifts during the time of uh, complete shutdown. It was so nice. People were still staying in touch and contacting. So there are many ways. Uh, next, uh, we can always help with the uh, shop and, and drop, so-called. We can ask, what is the need? Is there things we can actually go and get for them in the in the places like groceries or uh, the pharmacies and so forth. 
and it will it will really benefit um, our especially our elderly uh, parishioners who need these things and they're very vital uh, in their daily life. Uh, next, please. Of course, we can share resources. Number four is share resources. If we have certain excess of supplies that we have, we can always find those who are in need. And you know, just some things are you know uh, you know. Remember, there was a such a big problem. Everybody was running to the store for the toilet paper. Some people probably stuck it for uh, a few uh, a few years. But, you know, at a time when everybody is buying everything and they're just um, packing everything, uh, there is someone who didn't get that, who wasn't able to get that. And, and things can change really rapidly right now. We don't know what's going to happen. So in the time of pandemic, it's very important to, to find a way to share the resources. Uh, next one is we can make donations. And local, our church, food bank, uh, different non-for-profit organizations that are uh, helping. We can um, also donating blood, something simple. And it's actually very, very, um, uh, very practical. If you go to uh, some of the uh, blood banks uh, and places where you donate blood, they will tell you your cholesterol level. Uh, for that, they will, um, they will tell you uh, if you have already uh, developed antibodies, uh, from uh, COVID, and so there are so many things you will get for free if you go to these places and you can actually help someone you don't know who is really in need of blood, transfusion, and so forth. So it's, it's an easy way um, to, to, to make these acts of, um, of service. We can share our t talents, number six. So these things can be done online. We love exercise. We can we can set it up online. We can we can do lessons, different kind of music lessons on FaceTime, Zoom, Skype. Um, we can help uh, students if we have talents. We are teachers, and we we can organize a group on, on one of the you know um, uh, electronic ways to 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 help them uh, with with their classes and stuff like that. So there are things our children can even uh, create things, crafts and cards, uh, and do. Uh, help others. So, acts of service. The next number seven, very simple things. Uh, you know, to help someone pick up the garbage, help with the maintenance. Um, we can prepare meal for someone. That's a number seven. Прошу наступный. Yeah. So these things are very, very simple. Uh, some of the simple. Uh, uh, points that we can use and uh, number eight very important to thank our workers on the front lines people like healthcare workers firemen police officers grocery store workers those who will be always helping us during this time they they cannot they cannot take time off they most of the time they still have to be in the front line risking their lives and and it's so sad to hear sometimes that people are are actually like healthcare workers are being attacked. It's like they're they're they're, they're you know they're saying some uh, lies about the reality of the problem that we are facing right now. So they need everybody needs to be um, needs to feel that they are appreciated, especially those who go extra mile. You know, I'm a hospital chaplain also um, once or twice a week depends on on the uh, situation and, and sometimes when you look at these nurses, you know, we complain about wearing masks and, and, and that they are not convenient, it's so hard to breathe, breathe. I mean, these people on the floor, you know, when they open their mask, you can see the bruises, you can see that they, they have to use lotion. I mean, they cry, you can see they're exhausted completely. This is, this is, not, a, this is not a fantasy, this is a real, and they, they need at least our our um, our appreciation, just simple things, to thank them for their service. Um, so there's number nine, stay in the loop. Uh, in our neighborhood, in our parish community, uh, it's, as I mentioned before, important to communicate frequently. Find ways, sharing the information about uh, 
safety information and stuff like that. We can organize even video calls and, and gatherings. And the number 10 is support local businesses. It's important because that they will not survive. It will affect our communities around our parish. And, you know, if we support them, we, we, we come there and we meet them. We, we have these open doors to invite them. Not in the way that, you know, come to our church to service, but, you know, we show them the real, the real Christianity by being uh, present in their lives. Um, these things are very simple and um, uh, we can say practical. We can also go to a parochial level and uh, these things are um, uh, something that we have to think about, organizing our parochial commission for social ministry. We have to select the, the target groups on the level. I was helped by one of our parishioners uh, with these ideas, uh, Marika right here, and you know, whom are we helping? And on the level of eparchy, we can, we can uh, st strategically plan and coordinate these help, uh, you know, share our ideas and, 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 and develop the system. Where are we helping in Ukraine? You know, we connect with the commission of the of the social ministry um, and social service in Ukraine, Father Andrina Hirnyak, and through him, it's going to be easier. There are organizations like like um, um, Education Foundation in Ukraine that has particular system uh, how to find our communities, and through these communities, through our parishes in these regions, help. If it's in Ukraine, for example, and not always just send uh, the stuff there, but also maybe find a way to support some kind of program for these orphan orphans so they can learn to find uh, to find a way to uh, give them education to become mentors for them great program with a uh, organization like like um, uh, helping need from germany they're doing great job uh, by doing that so we have to find a way to coordinate these things on a level of uh, eparchy so we can serve be better um, ourselves, support ourselves and those in need. Uh, and um, we can always go back uh, to this first icon, the first slide, and um, uh, always be reminded that every time we do things, things we, we uh, become like Christ. Um, we are responding. Somebody said that when we are helping someone this is uh, the way that God responds to a prayer uh, and plea from the people who are praying and asking through us, through our service, through our presence, through, through our um, love. Thank you very much. Slava Jesus Christo. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Father Mekola, Diakoy, Otec Mekola, and uh, truly, um, it's a very challenging topic, service in our church and service in our parishes, and I like how you said there is no quarantine for, uh, for service, and uh, there is no quarantine for acts of love uh, shown to us by God and sharing that love of God we have received with others, so thank you so much for your uh, thoughtful presentation. I just want to uh, choose the other... Uh, Paulo, I just wanted to uh, add that, uh, you know, I would like to hear, you know, we would like to hear here and all in the eparchy especially, and myself, about your ideas from your parishes, from your experience, what are things can be done differently, things like that, that can actually, we have to share these, these, we can help in so many ways by sharing these um, experiences so we can be more effective in, in, in providing this service, because without without charity there is no our prayer and everything will be limited to 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 ourselves it, it will be limited to staying close the, the charity will 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 actually uh, be a missionary work and and help us in many ways thank you